Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and today I'm sharing some cards made with the Pink and Main August of 2024 Crafty Courtyard Kit called Snailed It. A few days ago I shared an unboxing video showing the contents of this kit. So here's a quick look at what's inside. You get colored cardstock, some foil cardstock, this huge stamp set with snail and mushroom images, plus a ton of sentiments. You also get coordinating dies and three layering stencils that you can use to color all of the images with different colored inks. You also get this pack of chunky glitter and a sheet of gold sticky gems. And this month's kit includes this five and a half by eight and a half inch paper pack that has all of these beautiful fall patterns. So lots of leaves, florals, acorns, plus some plaid, stripes, hearts, and houndstooth patterns. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I did was stamp my images. So I have a sheet of white cardstock cut to six by eight and a half inches that I've placed in my Misty stamping platform. And I'm using the placement of the images on the stencil as a guide for how I place these stamps down on my stamping platform. So you see I'm putting them on top of the stencil here and then I'm gonna pick them all up with the window of the platform and then I'll remove the stencil and be able to stamp these down. And um, I'm gonna be using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink to stamp these out. And I did end up inking these several times since these are brand new stamps. I wanted to make sure that I had a good crisp image and I didn't line these stamps up exactly with the stencil, but at least the images are pretty close. So I'll only need to scoot the stencil a little bit whenever I ink those up. But I selected some inks that match the pattern paper and I'm just gonna apply the color using some different blending brushes. And the pink and main ink colors that I'm using are Construction, the orange one, um, and then the green one's called The Park, and then I also use Lakeside Teal. And then I'm also using a yellow ink from Simon Says Stamp and a brown ink from Simon Hurley. And as I was inking up a few of the images with the different layers, I realized that I missed a few, so I had to come back in and color those up. And I, I did kind of overlap some of the colors a little bit, so you really want to keep in mind um, what color you're going to be inking you want to use the, the, the lighter shades first and then the darker shades. Or wait, I think I might have said that backwards. <laughs> it just depends. I guess depending on, um, yeah, you want to use the darker shades first. The darker shades need to come first and then the lighter shades. I did say that backwards. So anyway, as you can see, I'm just sitting here stenciling all of the different um, images. And I do have this sped up quite a bit, but this is definitely faster than coloring these up with Copic markers, I will say that. While I finished coloring these up, I'll tell you more about the Crafty Courtyard Kit subscription. If you want to receive a kit in the mail each month, you can join as a subscriber on the Pink and Main website. What's great about being a subscriber is that you can receive 15% off other products in the store. The kits are an amazing value. When you subscribe to the kits, it will be shipped around the 15th of the month, but you can still sign up and purchase through the end of the month unless it sells out. Your subscription will change to the next month's box on the 1st. The monthly subscription kit base price is $34.99, and an automatic shipping charge is calculated based on your location. If you'd like to subscribe, I will have a link down in the description box. This is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel. Now I got a little bit of smudges on the on some parts, but I'll be cutting them out with the dies anyway, so it doesn't matter. But um, I ran these through my electric die cutting machine, so now I have a bunch of images ready to go to decorate my cards. So I'm taking two coordinating sheets of pattern paper from the paper pack and I'm going to trim off a half of an inch from the long end and then I'm going to turn it to cut a panel that measures three inches by eight inches. 
I repeated this step for the other pattern. Then I lined them up together at a diagonal, making sure that the corners were lined up in the cut line of my paper trimmer. And I cut them at the same time. So now I can make two slimline cards using these pieces. I pulled out the coordinating colored cardstock to decide which color I wanted to use for my card base. Now remember, you get cardstock in the kit, so you don't have to buy the packs like I have here, but I go through so much cardstock, it's just easier for me to grab the packs. I went with the construction orange for the card bases, and you'll want to cut this at 7 inches along the long edge. And then for a layer, I cut a sheet of lakeside teal cardstock down to three and a quarter by eight and a quarter inch. And I took the seven by eight and a half inch orange cardstock and I scored it along the seven inch side at three and a half inches. And I should have grabbed my big scoreboard because it's longer than my mini scoreboard. So you see me having to flip it over in order to score the other side. So I have a card base that measures three and a half by eight and a half inches and a teal layer that measures three and a quarter by eight and a quarter inches. And then I have two triangle pieces that measure three by eight inches when they're put together. So I'm using the layered scallop circle dies because it has a large stitched circle that's the right size for what I need on this slimline card. So I went ahead and cut out two of these circles. Now for this first card, I glued the layer onto the card base first. And then I added the triangles and realized that I probably should have waited to put this on the card base because of the circle. I want the circle to be more toward the top of the card to cover up the plaid pattern instead of covering up those pretty leaves. And because this circle is going to be hanging off the side, I'll have to trim it along the edge of the card base. So I'm just adding glue to the part that's going to stick to the card and then when I trim it off I like to flip it over because it's easier to see where I need to cut. Now when I cut out my images with the coordinating dies, I guess the large set of mushrooms shifted a little bit so I have more of a white border toward the bottom. So you see me trimming off the white border all the way around the image. Now I should have stamped the sentiment on this circle first rather than trying to do it after it's glued down, but I was somehow able to stamp the sentiment using an acrylic block without messing it up, which is very rare. I was initially going to stamp the sentiment in brown, but it wasn't really showing up on my stamp, so I knew it wouldn't stamp very well. And uh, since I'm using an acrylic block, if I messed it up, it would be harder to fix. But that's one of the reasons why I love using a stamping platform. And I ended up stamping this using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Um, but I stamped the sentiment that says sending you mush love since I'm using the mushroom images on this card. And I didn't line up my coordinating dies very well on the images when I cut them out. So I uh, ended up having to trim several. After gluing the mushrooms on the circle, I realized that they needed to be moved down some, but the glue had already dried, so in order to cover up the space below it, I cut out a strip of grass using a, a die from my stash, and also I used that same stitch circle die, and I um, cut that out of some light green cardstock. And then to finish off the card, I added some gold sticky gems around the image and the sentiment. Now the process for the second card is pretty much the same, except I'm not going to glue it onto the card base first. So I'm just uh, gluing these down onto the layer. And I initially thought I might put a Love From Lizzie peel off sticker between the two triangles, but I decided against it. But I figured this time I would put the circle on there first and then trim it off before I put it onto the card base. And I'd also stamp the sentiment before actually gluing it down. So this time I'm actually using a stamping platform. And I'm going to put these images on here so I'll know where to place this longer sentiment. So this is the order that I should have done things the first time around. But again, I'm stamping this in some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I realized that I needed to actually scoot this circle over more so that I wouldn't cut off the end of that sentiment. So this one has a little bit more of the circle showing than the other card. But again, on this one, I put the grass along the bottom just like I did for the first card. Mainly because I didn't want the, the snail to be just kind of like up in the air with no, nothing to ground it. So 
Um, but I added the grass off camera. Now moving on to the next card, I'm using that um, extra layer, that teal layer, and the scrap pieces. And I used my silicone mat to measure over two inches. And then I put the pattern paper in the bottom left corner and I just traced the edges so that I would know where to cut because I want to have both of these um, patterns on this card at an angle. And so I'm just going to glue these on here. Now for the green piece, I didn't quite cut that right, so you'll see me trim that off here in just a second. But I used a similar layout on an A2 card in one of my challenges before, so I thought this would be neat to try on a slimline card. So after gluing down these two big pieces, I used the half inch strips that I had cut off at the beginning of this video, and I put those next to these um, large pieces and I glued these down and cut off the the edges that were hanging over. I'm placing one of the mushroom images along the bottom of the green plaid pattern and again I'm just going to cut off this white border since it's a little bit crooked <laughs> and then I also um, I'll be placing a snail next to that. Since I didn't really have any white on the card, I didn't really want to stamp my sentiment onto a white strip of cardstock, so I decided to just stamp it directly onto the top of the green plaid piece. And since this paper is kind of like a semi-gloss, I decided to stamp it with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. This is a pigment ink, which does take a little bit longer to dry, but I know that it will stay. So I'm having to be really careful as I glue this layer onto the card base. And also as I put the images down on, I don't want to smudge it. And I apologize that I went a little bit off camera here for a few seconds. <laughs> Normally I would pop things up with some foam tape, but I really want to try to keep things flat so that I don't have to pay extra postage. And um, I finished this card off with one of the largest gold sticky gems. So now I have three slimline cards made from two sheets of pattern paper. The August release that became available on August 16th included the two card cut essentials dies that I designed. So I wanted to share a few A2 cards using one of these dies and the paper from this kit. Now the dies are designed for cutting out six by six paper. And the paper pack in this month's kit is five and a half by eight and a half, but it will work with die number one. You just have to place it exactly over the lines on the edge of the die, and the zigzag edge is the part that won't get cut. But you'll get all of the other pieces with stitching. And to be sure that it doesn't shift, I taped the paper down to my magnetic mat using some low tack mint tape. So there will be a two and a half inch strip that can be used later. So I um, ended up cutting two patterns using die number one. And then I took all of the separate standalone dies that came in both sets one and two and I placed them on my magnetic cutting mat and I cut out a bunch of shapes with the metallic foil cardstock that came in the kit. And I also cut out more of these shapes using the teal cardstock. I'm using one of my favorite emboss and cut folders from Pink and Main. This has been out for a while and it's called Fall Leaves and I'm using this metallic foil paper. And when you run this through your die cutting machine, it not only cuts out the shapes, but it also embosses the lines. And look how gorgeous these turned out. Um, I'm gonna place the teal pattern window piece on top of my white top folding card base. And I'm using the leaves on the inside of the squares and I cut a shadow for the word hello from the teal paper to place behind the metallic gold foil hello that I cut out earlier. And I'm using one of the leaf dies to decorate this card. So I'm gonna set this aside and work on putting together another card. And as you can imagine with having so many different pieces, the possibilities of different combinations are endless. So I'm just playing around with some layouts here just so you can see some of the many things that you can do with these dies. 
and I had to resist my usual urge to try to use up all the pieces. I have so many ideas that I want to share, but for now, they're going to have to wait. I'm a teacher, and school started back this past week, so it's been a little crazy. So I'm just going to stick with five cards for this video, but I promise I'll have a lot more coming soon. So make sure you're a subscriber to my channel if you're not already, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my uploads. Now for this card, I used a teal card base, and I've placed one of the stitched rectangles toward the bottom. I glued a stitched banner piece in the top right hand corner, and I'll be trimming that off. But this one's pretty simple. I just glued down the hello and the leaf and placed that um, clear plate on top while, while the glue dries. And so now I'm going to put together this shaker card. So I'm adding glue to the back of my window piece, and then I'm cutting a piece of acetate to measure three and three quarter inches. This is a three, three and three quarter inch square. So I'm going to place that on top and then I'm adding some thin foam strips to the back of the window piece. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you don't have any gaps between these foam tape pieces because I'm using the glitter that came in the kit as the shaker bits for inside this window and you definitely don't want glitter to go everywhere. After putting this these foam foam tape strips down I'm gonna um, set this aside for a minute so that I can glue down the leaf pieces to the card base and I'm using the other window that I cut out from the other pattern paper as a guide so I'll know where to glue these down. I'm taping this window down so it doesn't shift while I glue these square pieces inside. And these are all stitched. I know it's really hard to tell on camera. But now that I have all the square pieces glued down, I'm going to remove that window, gluing down this teal piece. And the teal piece does have stitching on it as well. I'm taking my anti-static powder tool and basically running it across the the card base and on the inside of the acetate so that the glitter doesn't stick to it and carefully placing this window on top and then I'm going to glue the hello down on the bottom and the leaf on top and I think that's all this card needs I think both of these turned out really pretty. So here are two more quick and easy cards using the papers from the kit and shapes cut from the card cut essentials dies one and two. And I have all of those extra pieces to use for making other cards. So again, here are the three slimline cards I made earlier and the two A2 size cards. I really hope you like them. This crafty courtyard kit is perfect for making fall cards and because the paper pack is five and a half by eight and a half, you can even use the paper as card bases. If you purchase the Card Cut Essentials die bundle, you'll get access to a digital download that contains 56 card sketches. So if you're already a subscriber to the Crafty Courtyard Kits, having dies that will cut a full sheet of paper at once will save you so much time. And if you struggle with coming up with layout ideas, these card sketches will be really helpful. I'll have a link to these Card Cut Essentials dies down in the description box as well as the subscription link for the Crafty Courtyard Kits in case you're interested. I'd love it if you would leave me a comment down below and let me know which card is your favorite. I really hope this video has inspired you to get creative and I'd appreciate it if you'd give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.